All right, guys, how's it going? You know what I love? I love history. History is great because we can look back and see not only how certain events played out, but also how certain events were analysed at the time. Sometimes it takes weeks, months or even years before the final truth is outed though. The first half of this video will deal with one such instance where the truth was years in the making. It was the early 2000s and the tech media was beginning to be dominated by outfits like Tom's Hardware Guide, Anon Tech and Hard OCP. It was a fascinating time for the PC, with AMD's Athlon CPUs giving Intel's Pentium 4s more than a run for their money and ATI just having released the 9700 Pro, which shocked everyone when it trounced the GeForce 4 by unbelievable margins. Tom himself wrote up those articles as some of his last. His actual last article, however, is particularly interesting for a bunch of reasons. Tom was a curious character, like many of us in the industry to be honest, being so heavily interested slash invested in computer technology at that time especially, and even today, likely means you have a certain mindset. That is intellectual, probably slightly introverted, and these are some traits that don't necessarily transfer well over to the limelight which Tom found himself in. When every word you utter is so highly scrutinised, it's sometimes better not to say anything at all. So Tom had been silent since his September 11th 2001 article was poorly received, but nearly a year later, on the 25th of August 2002, he was back. After being informed about a fight that's going on between Kyle Bennett and Van Smith, the two people in this PC hardware world that he despises most. <laughs> you see what I mean, right? So Tom starts by telling the story of how Nvidia tried to convince him to run an article on ATI's Quack 3 cheat, which I covered in my Cheats, Lies and Video Games video. While he agreed that there was something cheesy going on, he didn't consider it serious. It was dirty laundry and he didn't want to have anything to do with it. So Tom declined Nvidia's invite to cover ATI's cheat and Nvidia instead went to Kyle Bennett over at Hard OCP who, according to Tom, this stuff is exactly Kyle's business. He made a huge story out of it but he never told the world that the material had come from Nvidia and that he was basically doing marketing work for them. Tom found this particularly hilarious because in the past Kyle had insulted Nvidia as well as specific Nvidia employees on numerous occasions. Back in the time when he was a diehard 3DFX follower, that's how times change or not, as the case may be, as anyone who follows the tech press knows that this is just Kyle's style. Always has been and always will be, and it didn't matter if it was Nvidia, ATI, AMD or Intel, Kyle generally called them out on bullshit back then and still does today. So Tom was disillusioned by how this was blown out of proportion and blamed Kyle for cashing in on an easy story. I'm not convinced that that deserves being despised over and I'm quite sure that there is more to this story between these two than just that. But moving on to Tom's second target and another interesting story when according to him, back in April 2002, AMD planned to attack Bapco. Just as with Nvidia calling him to advise on the ATI quack cheat, AMD were now calling Tom, apparently madly unhappy with Bapco, creators of the new Sysmark 2002 benchmark, believing that they have proof showing that Bapco had altered Sysmark 2001 in a way that would make Athlon XP look worse and Pentium 4 look better. They also had plans to issue a press release suggesting that Sysmark 2001 2002 should not be used. So Tom got his guys in the Munich lab to run each benchmark with Intel and AMD processors and then sent him the detailed results. After which he got in touch with John Peterson from Bapco, receiving a very detailed reply on May the 16th 2002, which Tom kept confidential because John asked him to do so. John's reply gave him the chance to see the whole situation under a different angle, with Tom finally declaring that he considered the material as not conclusive enough and there weren't enough grounds to accuse Bapco of any wrongdoings. So Tom told AMD that he could not back up their opinion and a few days later AMD told him that they would back off and that they would now try to join Bapco to finally have some impact on the development of future Sysmark benchmarks. 
AMD did attempt to join Bapco soon afterwards, a process which took months, a delay for which Tom criticised Bapco, as well for having a very low degree of transparency about their structure, while also noting that it was a bit strange how most of Bapco's members have very little or nothing to do with the development of the benchmarks. But getting back to the real point of Tom's article, which appeared to be more about slamming his two most despised people, this time it was Van Smith, an ex-Tom's Hardware Guide writer, false holy warrior beyond measure, who instead took up the Bapco story after Tom turned it down. Tom clearly does despise Van Smith, referring to him as a fanatic who believes that Intel and Rambus are strongholds of the devil and that AMD, Via and the others are the holy saviours. Before noting that Van finally left his publication, moving on to create his own website with a highly original name Van's Hardware, after Tom had dared to consider Pentium 4 a reasonably good processor in late 2000. Some of you probably think fair is fair. In a post over at the Ars Technica forum, Kyle took the high ground, stating that Hard OCP fully based their articles and opinions on research they do in-house and not what is fed to them by anyone, and that his only issue with Van this week was that he should do the same and not simply repost AMD's PR data and draw damning conclusions from that. And all of that seems reasonable to me. It kind of looks like Tom was just waiting on any opportunity to dish out some dirt. Tom's blurb, Battle of Hypocrites, on his two most despised persons. But let's now move on to the guts of the Bapco story over at Van's Hardware. Now, Tom definitely wasn't lying about Van having it in for Intel or Bapco. In fact, in years previous to this, in articles that are sadly no longer reachable, Van first exposed Intel's relationship with Bapco, noting that initially the Bapco URL was registered in Whois under Intel, but as word of this questionable connection spread, the entry was altered to remove the chip maker's name. However, the new Bapco listing's address was familiar to those in the industry, 2200 Mission College Boulevard, Santa Clara, California, Intel's domicile, and that does seem like a conflict of interest. He also went on to say that at last winter's platform conference, Randall Kennedy of CSA Research stated in his presentation that Bapco was essentially just a front for Intel. So clearly Van was aware something going on there between Intel and Bapco. So perhaps it was no great surprise when in August 2002, he finally released his article on this on part two of his Athlon XP 2600 Plus review. Van started by confirming that AMD had joined Bapco as a full member, undertaking this surprising move with the hope that it might be able to help correct a benchmark that AMD currently characterises as broken. Vance Hardware also discovered that Intel chaired the Bapco Desktop Performance Committee, which is the body that is responsible for Sysmark. But much more importantly, AMD apparently reluctantly admitted that due to Bapco's nature as primarily a meeting facilitator, Intel itself has been providing software engineers for the development of the Sysmark products. When Pressed further, the AMD representative admitted that it is likely that all Sysmark development so far has been conducted internally at Intel by Intel. AMD knew that the Athlon XP performed much worse compared to the Pentium 4 on Sysmark 2002 than on Sysmark 2001. And when trying to understand why this scoring discrepancy existed, they discovered that tasks were removed that favoured AMD, tasks were added that favoured Intel, and workloads that favoured Intel were repeated, sometimes many times, in order to inflate their weight under Sysmark's scoring scheme. One particularly damning example of this was the Adobe Photoshop component of Sysmark. In the 2001 version of Sysmark, 13 different filters were used. On 8 of those 13 filters, the Athlon XP 2000 Plus beat the 2 GHz Northwood Pentium 4. However, in Sysmark 2002, every single one of those 8 filters were removed. All the tasks where the Athlon XP beat the Pentium 4 and they were replaced with repeated filters that the Pentium 4 executed faster than the Athlon XP. Similar cases were seen using flash tests and also in access database tests, which favoured Athlon in 2001 but was almost completely removed in the 2002 version. Van finished his article by notifying readers of a class action lawsuit against Intel by disgruntled Pentium 4 owners who claimed Intel 
Intel misrepresented performance before he then went on to speculate that Intel simply created Bapco as a front organisation to distribute Sysmark as an independently derived benchmark suite. However, Intel produced those tests themselves while shielding themselves from suspicion, hiding behind Bapco. The whole AMD presentation was linked and it's a pretty fascinating document which I will also link in the video description below. Vance Hardware shut up shop less than a week later, citing a combination of expenses, threats, attacks, conflicts of interest and intimidating phone calls as the reason. Even the New York Times got involved in this story before the end. Not that this was the end of the story between AMD and Bapco. We all know what happened in the years afterward. Intel continued to lose on performance, but all manner of unsavoury pursuits, including bribery and threats, allowed them to maintain their monopoly at the expense of AMD and the consumer. At the end of 2009, they were finally getting their comeuppance as jurisdictions throughout the world levied fine after fine, before Intel finally brought it to an end by agreeing to pay AMD $1 billion and then settling with the FTC in 2010. As part of that settlement, the FTC ordered that whenever Intel makes a claim comparing the performance of a mainstream microprocessor and a compatible x86 microprocessor, or make any claim that references the performance of a mainstream microprocessor on any benchmark, they shall clearly and prominently make the following disclosure. Software and workloads used in performance tests may have been optimised for performance only on Intel microprocessors. Performance tests such as SysMark and MobileMark are measured using specific computer systems, components, software, operations and functions. And this order stands until this day. And over at Intel's Performance Benchmark Test Disclosure page, we can see them using mobile claims with benchmarks as measured by Sysmark 2014 SE. Underneath which is the disclaimer, Intel contributes to the development of benchmarks in various ways. Intel is a member of or participant of various benchmarking organisations and consortia such as Babco and Spec and its employees often serve in various leadership roles. Intel also contributes programming resources, technical support and or funding to groups that develop benchmarks. One of AMD's major failings to this day is naivety. They naively believed that they could change Bapco from within, only to be disappointed time and again, finally leading them to quitting the consortium in 2011, denouncing the Sysmark 2012 benchmark, a whole decade after denouncing the 2002 one. But it wasn't just about AMD this time. Nvidia and Viya, who had also joined the consortium previously, decided that they had had enough as well, with the latter stating, Via today confirmed reports that they have tendered their resignation to Bapco. They strongly believe that the benchmarking applications test developed for Sysmark 2012 and Ecomark 2.0 do not accurately reflect real-world PC usage scenarios and workloads and therefore feel they can no longer remain as a member of the organisation. You know, there used to be a time when guys like Van Smith were accused of being conspiracy theorist fanatics but the truth came out years later. This still happens today. The difference is, I don't need to wait nearly a decade to be proven right about how utterly reprehensible Intel and their satellite marketing companies are. A couple of days ago, Intel kicked off their Fall Desktop launch event, soon followed by what can only be described as an eye-opening benchmark of their upcoming 9900K CPU. But this time, rather than the CPU being independently reviewed by the tech press, a report was released by a company named Principled Technologies, the irony of which is almost too much to bear. That report was this. PC Gaming Processor Study, Intel Core i9-9900K Processor versus Competitors. A study commissioned by Intel Corporation. Now, let me just start by saying that I was under the impression that we actually have tech press for good reason, and providing fair and representative benchmarks of new hardware is one of the main reasons. Why Intel feels the need to commission a study in order to do what the tech press have been doing for years? I'll touch on at the very end of this video, and it likely won't be pretty. But anyway, principled technologies compared the performance of eight processors on 19 popular games, all of which 
are instantly recognisable and highly played titles. The following 12 pages or so comprise of benchmarks where, as expected, the 9900K wins handily. Some of the results, however, demand closer inspection. If we just start at the beginning and Total Warhammer 2, we first of all see a battle where the 9900K just ekes out a win over the 8700K and 8086K. The R72700X isn't too far behind, less than 10%. All of these benchmarks are being run at 1080p with a GTX 1080 Ti, so 10% behind, fairly standard I guess at that resolution. One thing of note though was Intel's own Skylake X chips with the 18-core Behemoth 9900X especially getting absolutely pummeled by near 60% margins. But let's concentrate on the fight that matters here, that is the 9900K versus the 2700X. In the campaign map we see a very large 24.2% win for the Intel chip and that's a result which is almost mirrored exactly in the Skaven battle. Moving on to the laboratory though and the gap is a massive 51.9% in favour of the 9900K. Wait, the laboratory you see? Didn't you just benchmark that same battle in your recent MSI RTX 28 Gaming X Trio review? And didn't you also note that the benchmark is sponsored by Intel and there are warnings that performance may be somewhat screwy on different hardware? Yes, yes you did. Curiously though, the Threadrippers perform fairly well, at least relative to the 2700X and Intel Skylake X chips. That was curious, but we'll see why that was later. It's no surprise to see CSGO is horrible on Ryzen, if 300 FPS can ever be called horrible. There's a large win for the 9900K over everything else in this benchmark though. Gears of War 4 and again the 2700X is far behind. And at the bottom of this we see a ridiculous benchmark of how bound by GPU performance the chips are, with the 9900K having a 13,600% advantage over the AMD chip. That's a new one, expect to see it repeated in low quality tech outlets everywhere next week. Moving on to Ashes of the Singularity, which is a game I often benchmark, and again another 50% win for the 9900K over the 2700X. 50% in Ashes, I simply cannot believe that. Then on to Assassin's Creed Origins, and a near 42% win in Assassin's Creed Origins, one of the most multi-threaded games in existence? I simply don't believe it. But again, curiously, at around only 14% behind, the Threadrippers are around about where I'd expect to see the 2700X at worse in this title. Why are the Threadrippers constantly outperforming the 2700X when we saw no evidence of this in the press? And after those initial awful results, the benchmarks actually calmed down somewhat and we see much closer results among the CPUs before we finally reach what should have been at the beginning of the document the test system information. Benchmark results can be fudged with ease, hence the requirement for test system details in the first place. This is so that if anyone disagrees with the results, they can test themselves with the exact same configuration. At first glance, everything appears to be in reasonable order, with one or two rather strange choices maybe. All CPUs are benchmarked at the respective memory controller maximums, which is fair. The GPU is a 1080 Ti, which is fair. One slightly weird choice is running the 2700X with the Wraith Prism Cooler, while the rest were run on a Noctua NHU14S. However, that is unlikely to have affected the 2700X's results significantly. And next up we have an unusual step as principal technologies provide a complete rundown of every step of their benchmark routine, literally every step. And looking through, it's crystal clear that the person or persons doing the benchmark are extremely competent, knowing every step to take in order to set up a fair benchmark. For example, by removing options like performance bias in the ASUS Prime X470, that kind of thing. There's a lot of work inside the BIOS here to set up the systems fairly, which is only something you would expect from a competent user. And do note this competence because that is what is most important here, because over the page it finally all makes sense at the very last point. Number 8. In AMD systems, download and install the AMD Ryzen Master Utility, then launch the utility, select Game Mode and click Apply. 
Now, game mode was introduced as a means of improving performance and compatibility in some games, particularly for the Threadripper CPUs where compatibility can be an issue with 32 threads. When turning on game mode, as you can see here, an option in the Ryzen Master Utility, Legacy compatibility mode is also turned on and memory access mode is changed to local from distributed. So that seems fair enough. In the case of thread rippers like my 1950X, perhaps, but it's certainly not in the case of the 2700X. Why not? Because when legacy compatibility mode is switched on, the cores are automatically reduced by half of the processor's capacity for processors with more than four physical cores. In other words, this 2700X you see is more like an R3 or a 2200G. It's no longer an 8-core 16-thread CPU. It's a 4-core 8-thread CPU. This is why it's being destroyed not only by the 9900X, but also by the Threadrippers. Principal Technologies? My arse. These guys are competent enough to run through a series of steps to make a fair unbiased benchmark, only to throw it all out for the 2700X at the very end. The whole point of this exercise, showing what they did every single step of the way, is so that certain low expertise websites, like The Verge or something, will copy the procedure to the letter and unfairly nerf the 2700X. They have even shown an exact rundown of the benchmark procedure for every single game. That's pretty bad, right? Well, check out this. You remember the FTC's order on Intel, forcing them to make clear when benchmarks have been compromised by the company. And you remember Intel's performance benchmark test disclosure. Looking at this table again, and we can see another mobile benchmark, this time measured by Touch Expert 2016, and a specific subtest of the Beautify photos. And you remember the benchmark disclosure below. You remember the part where Intel admitted to contributing to various benchmarks from Babco. Well, right below that is the smoking gun. Principal Technologies Benchmark Disclosure Intel is a sponsor and member of the Benchmark Expert development community and was the major develop of the Expert family of benchmarks. Principal Technologies is the publisher of the Expert family of benchmarks. You should consult other information and performance tests to assist you in fully evaluating your contemplated purchases. Just think about what this means. All this time, mostly AMD fanboys, it has to be said, have been claiming dubious benchmark shenanigans for years and generally being labelled tinfoil hat wearing nutters in the process. Yet Intel was clearly doing this with Babco and now they are clearly doing it with principal technologies. And what else have they done that we haven't heard about? Take a look at how often Sysmark and the expert benchmarks are used in the press. There are only two reasons for why this software can be benchmarked given what you've just learned. Either the reviewer is unaware of the compromised nature of these benchmarks or they are aware of it and choose to run them anyway. You remember my old friend Shrout over at PC Perspective, right? Take a look at his Threadripper review and the first page of applications tests. Sysmark 2014 SE. The 1950X loses heavily to a bunch of Intel CPUs, including the 7900X and the 6700K. How do you lose to both of those CPUs at the same time? Remember, one of them is a relatively lowly clocked, high core count workstation CPU, while the other is a highly clocked, low core count gamer CPU. How do you lose to both of those unless the benchmark specifically caters to Intel hardware? The next benchmark, Web Expert. Yes, by principal technologies. And the final benchmark, three out of three on this page, is 7-zip compression. This is one I've already covered. Basically speaking, compression works far better on Intel chips and decompression far better on AMD chips. There's little reason to favour compression though, that is creating an archive over decompression or opening archives. And you wonder why I give some of these guys a hard time. Choose between incompetence or malice, because I can only believe in coincidence so far. Remember Babco's John Peterson, who was in contact with Tom all those years ago? Well, apparently he's still there, managing relationships with Tom's, Anantech, Ars Technica, etc. I wonder if that's what Tom meant when he said that John's reply gave him the chance to see the whole situation under a different angle. 
Before I finish this one though, let me just state that over at Anantech, which is a publication I clearly have a lot of time for, which doesn't mean they're perfect, far from it, they do indeed use Sysmark as a benchmark. The reason for this is simply that Intel wants it benchmarked and doing so keeps them happy. Keeping these guys happy is sadly part of the review process and it has to be done. Otherwise you'll find yourself in my situation where I basically have no relationships with them whatsoever. But Anantech do it properly, as we can see here in the Ryzen 1800X review. Noting that AMD left Bapco in the last two years due to differences of opinion on how the benchmarking suites were angled towards Intel processors and had optimizations to show bigger differences than what AMD felt was present. The following benchmarks are simply provided as data, but the conflict of opinion between the two companies on the validity of the benchmark is provided as context for the following numbers. You see, there are ways to fight back against benchmarking pressure if you want to. By bringing this to the reader's attention, the reader can then go on to find out a whole lot more about Intel's dubious behavior over the years. Of course, Anantech also bench 7-zip showing compression, decompression, and the combined score. So there's that. So to wrap this one up, it's been another long one. Remember I said 2018 would be fought dirty? Well, it sure has been, and unsurprisingly, almost all of it is coming from Intel. 2019 will be far worse. I know because I love history, and history repeats itself. But AMD, they are their own worst enemies too. They suffered Bapco for a decade before leaving, and guess what they're doing with this principled research mob? Yep, they're also throwing money at them for a bunch of stupid crap. Let's see, principled Principal research marketing portfolio includes, yep, AMD. That is 13 different reports commissioned by AMD. And we all know that AMD is happily throwing money and pre-release hardware at outfits including Shroud Research and recently we learned that they are spending five times the money on GPU sponsorship at the highly dubious hardware Canucks GPU stuff. And you know what guys, if Nvidia or Intel were dumb enough to throw money at me, I would take it as well. So AMD aren't blameless, far from it. And these problems at AMD sadly exist very near the top. And finally, to the tech press, remember how many of you got publicly upset when AMD played favourites with Linus? Remember how many of you got privately upset when Shroud Research got early access to equipment and paid for it as well? Now another bunch of marketers are weeks ahead of you, benchmarking the 9900K before review day. You are being replaced, losing one liberty at a time, and it is long since past time you grew up here and fought back. I'll catch you later, guys. Thank <laughs> you.